new Elector Mag arrived. And with the new PC, so this is how I make the new vlog style videos. A little bit of work, but I like how they're coming out. Plus 4K. I win. In the previous video, you saw this PCB setup for the Disky. Well, here's where I ended up with the actual PCB itself. It turned out pretty awesome, pretty simple. And then the render is just Oh, I'm so happy with this. This is gonna be super, super cool for the Disky project. This is the enunciators for the different flight conditions, basically problems in the Saturn V rocket and limb. I'm not gonna show you the backside until the boards come. They're ordered from PCB way, pretty simple. Just went ahead on their website, ordered them up, got the extra upgrade of the boards. Just did silver for the solder terminals. I was thinking about gold, but I didn't want to seem too silly, but from PCB way, they should arrive pretty quick and we'll play with them when they do. Didn't show this in the previous videos, but did a review of this Adam Star microscope a little while ago and it finally found a place permanently on my bench. I've been using this magnifying glass and this soldering iron holder for quite some time and it works awesome. It's time to switch and I have found that this works absolutely just fine for a quick glance, just as well as having a magnifying glass a lot better in some cases. So I've turned the lights way down on it. They're not even necessary at all. Um, just the ambient light in here works just fine. Pretty happy. I'm going to try and integrate this into some videos. T800 approves. Just finished a mailbag and uh, one quick tip for this week. These sample books, grab them. I grab them whenever I find them cheap on eBay or AliExpress. And honestly, I'm finding them the lowest price I've seen in several years right now. Like I've seen these up to 40, 50 bucks. And right now they're right around the 20 mark. And that's pretty reasonable for the form factor. You pay for the form factor, right? To have them on the shelf and easily just prototype whatever you want real quick. And uh, that's that's kind of what I like having. You never know. We're going to get into some projects and probably need these for too long. Now uh, we'll have them. Pretty cool. Aaron Albert, I believe. These ones are for you. Decided to reprint the lower half of the disky, and this is how it's coming out of Prusa Slicer. It puts this super thin layer down, and then the support material. I think it's two millimeters apart, and I had a, a bit of a goof up on the initial print. It was my own fault, but check that out. Isn't that neat? That's the first super thin layer, and then the support material starting. It's almost transparent. Isn't that neat? Good old CR10. I, I, unbelievable. These results are pretty impressive. All right, this is pretty cool. ESP32 S2 pulling YouTube chat from Lo-Fi Beats channel, and it is working. That is freaking cool. But I don't know how to make it scroll. Guess I gotta figure that out. Serial monitor works fine. Pretty cool using Brian uh, Brian Locke's library. It just works. Got this printer on eBay. Uh, it's brand new and it's a wireless with a lithium ion battery in it. And they shipped it without the power cord. It was from a local supplier in London. And I just hit them up and said, look, this is no good without the power supply. It needs nine volts. It doesn't charge through the micro USB. And it's, uh, he went ahead and refunded me the whole order without wanting it back. He said, it's no good to them. Well, I went and dug in the bin and it didn't take me long to find two capable power supplies. This is the standard, whatever that is, five mil. But this is the exact right one. And the only problem is this is only 300 milliamps, so pretty weak, but providing it doesn't burn itself up, 300 milliamps is fine, that'll charge. So this is outside negative. So uh, before plugging it in, we better take this apart and make sure outside is negative. So fluke in here to the barrel jack and just over to the USB cases and sure enough outside is it is center positive so 
here's the inside of our uh, little wireless printer and uh, should be able to make it work. Okie dokie, back together. Let's see, does it let smoke out now? Nope. We have a mode light, which is apparently what they're using for a charge light. How cool is that? I like it. Can we power it on? Sure can. Neat. Let's see if we can get it to do something. Got some receipt paper. And we'll close that down, like so, maybe. I think that's the right size. Sure is. Now, if we hold feed and power, I bet you it'll do a. Look at that. Isn't that the cat's pajamas? Oh, it smokes. <laughs> Holy Jesus, gonna use my whole roll of paper. And with that is our self test. And if we plug in our power, do we go to charge? We sure do. Good to go. Good deal. Free. Wee. Handy being handy, isn't it? And having some goodies in the bin. And here we go. Now it lives beside my brother printer for the uh, labels for the bags and stuff for the kits. And we can do a test. And to hide the personal info, but that's what we get. That's our delivery note that we can put into our packaging. No problem now. So I can go down and pick my kits super easy. All right, well, it took a fair bit of time, but using Brian Locke's library for the ESP32, I was able to get live YouTube chat flowing from the YouTube API. And this is the Lo-Fi Beats YouTube channel, uh, their live chat just coming through Wi-Fi wire to my ESP32 from MakerFabs, working like a champ. This is gonna work really cool to have on the workbench and monitor our chat live. Very, very neat. Actually getting a little bit better at Fusion 360 and I was able to design more or less a proper enclosure for the, this touchscreen display. And I think it's gonna print out pretty good. I even made a little base for it so we can have our chat window on the workbench. Okay, our tub is done and just like that <laughs> that's pretty cool <laughs> wow that's an interesting way to do infill check that out or not infill support material <laughs> that is cool well that's our disky tub <laughs> Lots of support, but we end up with a gorgeous outer face and layers and not a lot of mess. And it's actually not that heavy. This looks worse than what it is, so well worth it in my opinion. Pretty cool. Here we should have our new top lid for our ESP32 display. And it looks like I was off by about one millimeter on one side. Darn it. Pretty good though. Okay, pretty proud of how this came out. Look at that. ESP32 terminal complete. The glue just hasn't set. I just glued the, the stand on uh, rather than forming it all and printing it as one piece. I just glue it on with a little tiny bit of super glue. But yeah, USB accessible and this will just sit on the desk beautiful and give us YouTube chat when we're doing our live streams here on, uh, on Make Me TV. So check it out. If you're not subscribed, click down below. And that is that. We are up and running with Brian Locke's awesome library and pulling from the YouTube Lo-Fi Beats channel because they're always live and that's the example Brian gave. I am super happy with this. This is pretty cool. Just like a stream deck, almost the same size, sits uh, right on the desk and working good. Not bad. I still wish I could do scroll, but I'm not a smart enough coder. 
onward and upward in the Disky project. So this is the Apollo AGC Disky display that we're making. PCBs on order. Next order of business is the display itself to give us our guidance information. For that, we're going to use this Nexteon TFT display. Got this from Amazon. I'll try and remember to post a link down below, but basically these are an HMI, a human machine interface solution. I've never used before and I'm kind of delighted to give it a try. They have this cool IDE that I'll show overlaid here that allows you to just basically drag and drop things in and make your own human machine interface and interface it with a microcontroller. In this case, we're going to use Arduino Nano and then it'll interface to the Raspberry Pi. Pretty cool. Even comes with a little case that we aren't going to use because this is going to mount right in there. All right, this will get its own video. I went ahead and programmed it, but check this out. This does not do this display justice. That is so awesome. That is very reminiscent of the EL display in the actual disky. So yeah, that's a win. This is going to work awesome. Done. I am happy that is going to look pretty cool in the disky. Ha <laughs> ha. We win. Just got to mount everything permanent and uh, good to go. Oh yeah. That's starting to look cool. This is what it'll look like. Very neat. Ha, huh, love it. Finished up a mail bag and time to file some stuff away. I've got some awesome new voltage regulators this week. You can check out all the mail bags over on Patreon. New batch of IR LEDs and a quick check of them. Anytime you want to check an IR LED, just use your phone camera or any other digital camera. They, uh, the filters aren't that great to block IR. You can actually see the glow, so. Little update on the CNC. I set up the PC with candle and I went to pull the settings and I got very few out of it. So I decided to update this Kronos to the newest Gerbil. I was able to do that in the Arduino IDE by downloading it and just programming the example. You have to program it as an Uno and then it works. Strangely, it didn't work as a Nano, which is very odd considering the same processor, but whatever, it worked. And uh, yeah, all good to go. And now when we enter dollar sign, dollar sign into console, we actually get a whole list of cool settings. So we've got a good place to start. And if we issue commands, it actually can move the axes. <laughs> Pretty cool. I am happy with this.